look at the word of God today very critically. I want you to be attentive, please. I don't want you to move over that. Just be attentive. The message is titled, You are God's investment. Tell somebody, I am God's investment. Tell somebody you are God's investment. What do you mean by investment? Investment simply means when God has deposited something in you. When God has loaded you with certain things. When God has surrounded you with certain abilities, gifts and powers. When God has made you to be lifted. You have become God's investment. That is to say, God has invested something in you. God has invested something in somebody here in Jesus' name. And that is why I say that you who is God's investment, you who are God's investment, the point today is that you must know what is invested in you and how to appropriate it. There is a story in Daniel chapter 2. We are going to read from verse 1 to 13. Daniel chapter 2 verse 1 to 13. And in the second year of the reign of Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar dreamed dreams, wherewith his spirit was troubled, and his sleep broke from him. Then the king commanded to call the magicians, and the astrologers, and the sorcerers, and the Chicadians, for to show the king his dreams. So they came and stood before the king. Verse 3. And the king said unto them, I have dreamed the dream. And my spirit was troubled to know the dream. Then spake the candles to the king in Syria. O king, live forever. Tell that summons the dream, and we will show the interpretation. The king answered and said to the candles, The thing is gone from me. If you will not make known unto me the dream, with the interpretation thereof, you shall be cut in pieces, and your houses shall be made a tongue here. But if you show the dream and the interpretation thereof, ye shall receive of me gifts and rewards and great honor. Therefore, show me the dream and the interpretation thereof. The answer the king has said, Let the king tell his servant the dream, and we will show the interpretation of it. Verse 8. The king answered and said, I know of certain thing that you will gain the time, because you see the thing is gone from me. But if you will not make known unto me the dream, there is but one decree for you. For ye have prepared lying and corrupt words to speak before me, till the time be changed. Therefore, tell me the dream, and I shall know that ye can show me the interpretation thereof. The Canadians answered before the king and said, There's not a man upon the earth that can show the king's matter. Therefore there is no king, lord, nor ruler that asketh such things at any magician or astrologer or cardinal. And it is a rare thing that the king required. And there is none that can show it before the king except the gods whose dwelling is not with flesh. Verse 12. For this cause the king was angry and very furious. I commanded to destroy all the wise men of Babylon. And the decree went forth that the wise men should be slain. And they saw Daniel and his fellow to be slain. Praise the Lord. This is the story of a king called King Nebuchadnezzar. He dreamt a dream that he could not remember. He had a vision in the night. He has forgotten the vision. But he called for the interpretation that all the magicians, all the guardians, all the astrologers, all the sorcerers, that they should be gathered together. Even including the people that came from Jerusalem as slaves. That is, the Jews. Among them was Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. The 
decree was harsh, draconian, bloody, and merciless. No, look at it. Because the people were unable to interpret your dream. You didn't tell them the dream, remember? You didn't show them, you didn't tell them anything about the dream, but you said you forgot the dream. And you want the people to interpret the dream to tell you what the dream was and interpret it. Is that not heartless? Hello? Is that not heartless? That is brutal. That is barbaric. That is ungodly. That is bloody. That is draconian. It's not acceptable anywhere. But I want to shock you this morning that the king was right. Hello? I want to shock you this morning to tell you that the king was right. Hello? Nebuchadnezzar was very, very correct, was very, very right. When I studied these scriptures some years ago, I said, no, oh, this kind of kings, you can't bring those kings to this present generation. But God took me and said, young man, look at the scripture very well. And God brought me to the other side of the scriptures. Listen, very well, as I'm going to give you certain things this morning. That king Nebuchadnezzar was very godly, was very right, was very correct, and everything he did was according to the word of God. Hello? Hear me and hear me very well. That king Nebuchadnezzar was a king that was chosen by God. The decree was harsh, yes. It was draconian, yes. It was bloody and merciless, yes. But something happened. Listen. The people pleaded, their soldier pleaded, that will give me, give, tell us the interpretation, tell us the meaning. Just tell us the dream, we'll give you the interpretation. He said, no! But I want to justify King Nebuchadnezzar this morning. Maybe you'll be reading this scripture by the ordinary ground, but I want to take you to another realm. Say, Pastor, take me to another realm. I want to take you to another realm of this scripture. Why Nebuchadnezzar was right, why he was a very godly king. Listen very well. There are three reasons why Nebuchadnezzar was very right, and why God supported him, and why I supported him. Listen, number one reason. Look at Daniel chapter 1. Daniel chapter 1. We want to read from verse 3 to 5. And we want to bring down certain elements in those places. Daniel chapter 1 verse 3. Are you there with me? And the king spake unto Asphazan, the master of his eunuch, that he should bring certain of the children of Israel and of the king's seed and of the princes. Verse 4. Children in whom was no blemish, but well favored, and skillful in all wisdom, and cunning in knowledge, and understanding science, and such as had ability in them to stand in the king's palace, and whom they might teach the learning and the tongue of the Cardinals. Verse 5. And the king appointed them a daily portion of the king's meat and of the wine which he drank. So nourishing them three years that at the end thereof they might stand before the king. Look up. The king took a very drastic action against the Cardinals. Remember According to this place we read in verse 3 and 4, the people were specially chosen from among others. Hello? He chose these people. If you read verse 3 again of Daniel chapter 4, 1, and the king spake unto as well as the master of his youth, that he should bring certain, certain of the children of Israel, not all the children of Israel, certain of them, and of the king's seed and of the princes. The three reasons why this king was right is number one. He ordered that people should be specially chosen from among the people. Two, the people were naturally gifted. People were naturally gifted. Then three, he trained these people. He invested in them. Hello? I want you to look at it. King Nebuchadnezzar was disappointed because these are the people that were specially chosen. The people that were picked from among the congregation. I expect that as you have been specially chosen, you should be different. You should have knowledge of the dream that I dreamt. Two, the people were 
gifted. When you read the Bible, you will see they were specially gifted. Then three, he trained them for three years. He trained them, he gave them free medical attention, free food, free security. And I know he was paying them in turn and money was rolling to their account. Hello. has invested in these people it's like saying what you can't give me the solution to this problem and i'm invested much on you i have spent all the life watching on you every month we pay you in dollars every money we you, you, you eat very fine food we give you the kings look at this four that is chapter one that is chapter one children in whom was no blemish but well favored special children and skillful in wisdom he expected grace wisdom from them so that even if they had forgotten the dream people were skillful with, with no wisdom and Connie in knowledge they should have knowledge of what he does not know what he has forgotten with Connie in knowledge and understanding science and such as had the ability of them to stand in the king's palace please look up, look up, look up there is, there, is, there is a level you will know that somebody has got to if he can't perform you will be disappointed two of us are you with me there is a level that you will know that somebody has attained when somebody says he's a professor of some certain uh, field and he comes you give him a simple question he's unable to give you the answer he will cut you off which means it's not productive listen very well Nebuchadnezzar was angry and his anger was justified because number one, he shows the people, he told the prince of the union, he says shows people, certain people. So before you were chosen, there was something in you. Then two, the people were gifted with knowledge, cunning knowledge, wisdom. They were the people were talented people. Then three, look at verse five. Verse five of Daniel chapter one. And the king appointed them a daily portion of the king's meat, of the wine which he drank. So nourishing them three years. Look up, look up, look up. If you know the salary that he paid each of them each year, each month, each week, each day for three years. That is a huge investment. The king was hungry because he has invested much on these people. The king was angry because he has spent much money, much time to train these people. And most of these people were talented people, they were wise people, they were knowledgeable people, they were science. What? You can't give me the answer to this problem? You must die. The king was justified. The king was right. The king was correct. Nothing was wrong about what the king did because the truth is this. When we relate it to God, come back. I want to give you something about God. God is telling somebody here, as he has invested in you, if you don't meet up to standard, he will cut you off. Hello? That is where we are going. That is where we are going. God is saying that if you don't meet up with what he tells you to do as a child of God, you, listen, very well, number one thing, you were called, selected from among many people. It was a privilege when you open to first Peter chapter 2 verse 9, open to first Peter chapter 2 verse 9. First Peter chapter 2 verse 9. I want you to see this king in relation to the word of God as a perfect example of what God was. First Peter chapter 2 verse 9. Am I right? First Peter chapter 2 verse 9. Are you there? But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. A holy nation, a peculiar people. Look up, look up, look up, look up, look up. These people were chosen by Nebuchadnezzar, specially chosen from among the people. If you look at Daniel chapter 1, verse 3, he told me, you know, he said, shoes of certain qualified, shoes from them. Look, let me tell you something. There's nothing that qualifies you to be born again, to be saved, than somebody who is born into a Juju house, who died a Juju priest, and who has gone to hell. Hello? It's a privilege. You were specially called and chosen to be in this place. You were specially called and chosen to be a Christian. It is not by merit. It is a privilege. So the is saying, because of what God has invested.
spent in you people and because of what I have spent in you people just imagine yourself you've been in church you've received training Bible study you are receiving word of knowledge you are receiving just security is upon you no weapon from the gates shall prosper anyone that touches you touches the apples of God's eye you even put just sticker in the water you are sick you drink it you are healed security heads and God is saying I'm investing much in you I'm investing much in you and you are telling me that like the Nebuchadnezzar when you can't meet up when you are not fruitful that I should leave you the people will go to hell fire hello you see where we are going do you know where we are going even in John chapter 15 verse 2 he said any branch look at this John chapter 15 verse 2 he said any branch in me any branch in me that does not bear fruit he said I will cut off and I will cast into hell fire God hates unfruitfulness God hates unfruitfulness and when you look at the Bible, he said the goodness I was very wicked he was not wicked that is the nature of God are you listening to me are you hearing me the nature of God is whatever he has invested in you whatever he has invested in me he will hold you accountable and when you are unable to produce results like the guardian, the magician, the astrologers that we are unable to produce results he said we cut them off go and check up your value is determined by the value that you add to the hands of God I come again your value is determined by the value are you hearing me is determined by the value that you add to the word of God hello if you are in the hands of God and you are not fruitful God says as he tell you like Nebuchadnezzar who was angry to cut off the people he said he will cut you off say pastor why are you so harsh it is the Bible I read Ah, uh, Nebuchadnezzar Nazar was a very, a very, a very, very authoritative man. Yes! He invested much on these people. God has invested much on you. Go and check, go and check on these new generation banks. Are you hearing me now? Go and find out these new generation banks. And even some established men, if they employ you and you are not productive, they will lay you off. First of all, they will demote you or they will lay you off. Go and check. Go and check up. Hello? You are not answering me. Go and check up this new generation back. If you are not productive, if you are there and you are saying because I am there, you are not productive, they will demote you and they will lay you off. One of my friends who was in one of the banks, I won't mention the name of the bank. He called me and said, Bro, I'm back. You should send him with the account so that we know that you are there. My, those customers were brought by me. Are you aware? You are not aware. Oh, so you think you can just be in the establishment, you just be the reserve salary and be blowing fire blowing you without showing any value. Your value in the company, in the establishment, in the house of God is determined by the value that you add to the church. That's what the goodness I was saying. And that is exactly what God is saying this morning. That my son is my daughter. I've invested much in you. And if you refuse to be productive, I will cast you out. Nobody wants to hear this kind of message normally. Are you hearing me now? It's not an attractive message. And nobody is ready to give an attractive message. You are born again. God gave you the talent, the tongue to speak to somebody to come to the faith. You are keeping quiet. Say, I have a very busy schedule. Pastor, God will understand. God will not understand anything. God give you a beautiful voice. You can sing. You sat in the congregation and you are not in the choir. God will ask it of you on the last day. I'm telling you honestly. You have cash in hand. You can support the word of God. You can support the work of God. You know there are gifts of government. Some people have gift of administration. Some have people gift of giving. Are you aware? It's in the Bible. Some people's duty, God made them in the church to give. I told you there are some people who are supplying the fuel to this church every Sunday. It's all that money. They just send the money to the account and we don't have problem with fuel on Sundays. God gave you that privilege. God gave you that opportunity, that right. He gave you that duty and you are sitting idle. You are counting cash for yourself. 
You are thinking how you can be richer and richer, your family can be richer. No, you are not productive. You are not fruitful. Some time ago, I gave you testimony. When I was working with the government, I don't know how my salary, my salary was about, was about uh, 1,000 something then, I think. I mean, no, about 2,000 something my salary then. I used to remove 300 naira every month. I put it in the loop for one old woman in the church. 300 naira. If you, if you, if you calculate 300 naira inside 2,000 something, let me assume that my salary was up to 3,000, but I know it was not up to 3,000. If you, if you calculate that one, it's like I'm receiving 100,000 and I'm giving 10,000, 50,000 to somebody every month. Regularly, I will envelope it. No, there was no cashless policy there. I will envelope it. Initially, I will give it to the pastor or the woman. He will give it to the woman. The woman said that she will tell her, the person who sent me this money. The pastor said the person said I should not tell you the name. He persuaded the pastor. Tell, tell me, tell me. Let me pray for this person. I know, like I told you, the woman was even a prophetess. In all her prophecy, he could not even see me. Are you listening to me? She slits now. The point I want to make to you is that any opportunity you have to do good and God is, is an investment of God in you. Hello? Any opportunity that is giving you regularly to do a particular good is an investment of God in you. And if you refuse to do it, you are like the astrologers, the magicians, the guardians, the soothsayers, the sorcerers that could not perform their duties. You know what it means for a king to humble more than at least a hundred people to be feeding. I don't know the number, but at least the guardians could be 20, astrologers could be 20, magicians could be 20, sorcerers could be 20, wise men could be 20, and just the collected 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 25 million, about a hundred. He was feeding them every day with the kind of food he eats at the mischief. He was feeding them every day and taking the drink the wine. And you remember Daniel said, we will not eat of the portion of the king's meat. You remember that story? We will not eat of the portion of the king's meat. But he fed his other people. And you tell me that Nebuchadnezzar should not be angry. You tell me that Nebuchadnezzar should clap down for the people who were unable to produce the answer. Whether you are able to tell me the meaning of the dream because I couldn't give you the dream, you are in trouble. Listen to me. God is telling somebody here that whatever he has invested in you, that you refuse to be fruitful, you refuse to be productive, that like the Nebuchadnezzar death with the captains, astrologers, magicians, soothsayers, and wise men of Babylon, so will it deal with you here and out there. I'm not the one that wrote the Bible. Oh, so let the side of the way that you want to read. You don't want to just oppose it to the word of God. God says, I should tell you, I am not guessing. This is what God told me to tell you. I am not suspecting. Listen. For every gift, for every talent, they are given according to to the people's abilities. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing what I'm saying now? For every gift, for every talent, they are given according to the people's uh, abilities. And appropriate the therefore gifts and talents accordingly. You will be charged for treason. That is capital punishment. Praise the Lord. Are you following what I'm saying? So when I was telling you from the beginning of the message, that King Nebuchadnezzar's decision was very right, was very correct. I know some of you frown in your heart. You say, how can pastor say that Nebuchadnezzar was right? How can you say that his action was justified? But now judge it for yourself. God is saying that like Nebuchadnezzar did, he will do similar thing. In case you didn't appropriate the gift and the talent and wisdom be invested in you properly, that he will even do more. Where is the place for sinners? Where is the place for sinners? Talk and wear, man. Where is the place for sinners? Is that wickedness in the part of God? Is that wickedness? Don't ever make the mistake of thinking that once you are in the church, once you are born again, you are forever born again. He wants you to make use of the salvation experience. He wants you to make use of this 
what he has given you, what has invested in you, what he has invested in you here and there, God wants you to make use of it. And he wants you to come out and say, my father, as from today, I want to repent. Listen very well. God is not a man that is your life. He has invested much in everyone here. He has given you the privilege to know things that other people don't know. Don't you understand? There are people who don't even know anything about restitution out there. There are people who don't know that to be born again is to come from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light. And they remain in the darkness. And because God has done this for you, He said this is an investment. I especially shows you out a peculiar person. And you disappoint me, you say you will be angry with that person. Hello. Hello. Now I ask you, was the business alright? Was the business alright? Oh, you are just asking yes. You don't believe. Was the business alright? It was right. Because for everything that God has said in the Bible is for our learning. It's not just for that the kidneys that issue. It's to appropriate it to our present time, to our learning. That is why he said in Romans chapter 15. God says something in Romans chapter 15. In Romans chapter 15. In verse 4. In 15 from for whatsoever thing we are written aforetime, we are written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scripture might have hope. Those things were written for our learning. It's not just the story of Nebuchadnezzar. He's telling you that the story is needed to you now. And God is, I didn't even know when I was born again. I would just read the Bible, they get that, they get that. But God is saying that in the same way that is written for our learning, so is it written for everyone's learning out here and there. So if you know that you are born again and God has invested something in you, God says that you tell you, be fruitful. Tell somebody close to you, be fruitful. Tell him, be fruitful. Tell him, be fruitful. God is talking about fruitfulness. No excuse from God. Oh God, since you cannot tell me the dream, since you cannot open my eye to see who I'm going to preach to, I will not preach to. Oh, the beginning you must tell us the dream very well, then it's a prediction. I say, no. God says, as from this moment, anyone here that I hear the sound of my voice, and I hear all day, he say, repent. Come back to me and be ye fruitful. And be productive so that you will eat the fruit of your land. That is what he's saying in Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18. Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18. Just let's go there. Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18. Come now, let us reason together, said the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, it shall be as wool. If ye be willing and obedient to the voice of God, ye shall eat the good of the land. If ye be willing and obedient, ye shall eat the good of the land. But if ye refuse and rebel, ye shall be devoured with the sword. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. This morning, you know that you are born again. God give you responsibility, you are not missing up the responsibility. You will just bow down your head and say, God, have mercy on me. I'm forgive, I'm, I'm repenting today. Forgive me. Bow down your head. Talk to God in prayers. Tell God to have mercy on you. Tell God to forgive you. I pray for this congregation and the children that said I want to manipulate to become bad adults. Lord, I destroy that fruit from these children in Jesus' name. Lord, you show me a multitude of them. Today, they are sanctified. Amen. They are cleansed. Amen. And Lord, I pray for the adults here, the youth. Father, give them victory in the name of Jesus. Amen. Lord God, many people are manipulated and they are not in the church as we are talking. 
Lord, today I pray. Visit them at home in Jesus' name. Amen. And we deliver the arm of God. Because you want to do a new thing in their lives. Lord, visit them in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now when we are gathered again, Lord God, they will see the hand, they will see the finger. Amen. And your name will be glorified. I call everybody here with the blood of Jesus. Amen. I call everybody here with the blood of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Father, for praying. Answer. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen.